So let's examine more closely elastic collisions that take place along one direction, along one dimension, let's suppose along the x-axis. Now recall that elastic collisions are those collisions in which the kinetic energy as well as the momentum of the system of objects remains constant, it is conserved. So let's suppose I have two objects, objects A and objects B, that are traveling along the x-axis. Now the mass of object A is MA and the mass of object B is MB. Now suppose before our collision takes place, object A is traveling with velocity VA and object B is traveling with velocity VB. So our elastic collision takes place and the objects move apart. Now the velocity of objects A and objects B after our collision takes place is given by VA prime and VB prime. So because our collision is elastic, we have the conservation of kinetic energy. So we have the following equation one and we have the conservation of momentum. So we have the following equation two. So equation one states that the sum of the kinetic energies of the two objects before the collision takes place is equal to the sum of the kinetic energies of the two objects after our collision takes place. And likewise, the sum of our momentum of our two objects before the collision is equal to the sum of the momentum of the two objects after our collision takes place. So, we have a system of two equations. That means we can solve for two unknown variables. So let's suppose we know what the mass of object A and object B is, and we also know the velocities of the two objects before our collisions. So we want to solve for the velocities after our collision, we want to solve for VA prime and VB prime. So let's begin by using our equation two. So we have equation two shown here, and we want to bring all the MA terms, the VA terms, and the VA prime terms to the left and everything else to the right. So we get the following rearranged equation. Now notice MA appears in these two terms and MB appears in these two terms. So we can bring them out and we get the following equation and let's label that equation as equation C. Now let's take uh, equation 1 and let's multiply the whole equation by 2. Notice that 1 half appears on every single term. So if we multiply the entire equation by 2, all the 1 halves cancel out and we get the following result. Now, once again, let's bring all the MA, VA, and VA prime terms to uh, one side, the left side, and everything else to the right side. So we get the following rearranged equation. Now notice the MAs appear on both of these terms and the MBs appear on both of these terms. So we can take those terms out. Now we get the following rearranged equation. And notice we can represent these two terms in the following two ways because if we multiply these guys out, we get back these two terms. So these two equations are equivalent. And let's call this equation equation D. Now, if we take equation D and divide it by equation C, we get the following result. So we take this divided by this, and we take this side, the right side, divided by the right side of C. We get the following result. Notice the MAs cancel, the MBs cancel, and the VA minus VA prime, and VA minus VA primes cancel, and the VB prime minus VB, and VB prime minus VB also cancel. So we're left with the following result. VA plus VA prime equals VB prime plus VB. So let's bring all the velocities before the collision to one side and all the velocities after our collision to the other side. So we get the following result, which we can rearrange into the following equation. So VA minus VB is equal to the negative of VA prime minus VB prime. So what this equation tells us is the following. It tells us that the relative speed of the two objects before the collision takes place 
is always equal to the negative of the relative speed of the two objects after our collision takes place. So let's see an application of this result. So let's suppose we have mass A and, and mass B traveling in opposite directions along the x-axis. So they both have the same exact magnitude. Now this object has a positive velocity and this object has a negative velocity. So if we want to calculate the relative speed of our two objects before collision, we have 10 meters per second minus negative 10 meters per second. The negatives become positive and we have 20 meters per second. So the relative speed of our objects before collision is 20 meters per second. Now that means that according to this equation, the relative speed of the objects after the collision is the negative of their difference. That's exactly what this equation tells us. So, let's suppose our collision takes place, the objects move apart, object A is now traveling in the opposite direction with 10 meters per second, and object B is traveling in the positive direction, so 10 meters per second. So now, if we take the negative of the difference, so we have velocity of object A, so we have negative 10 meters per second minus positive 10 meters per second, so we get negative 20 meters per second, and if we take the negative of that, we get 20 meters per second, and notice this is exactly equal to this, and that's exactly what this equation tells us. It tells us that the relative speed or velocity of the two objects before the collision is equal to the negative of the relative speed of the two objects after our collision actually takes place. Now, this formula, by the way, works for elastic collisions along one dimension, along one direction.